This is such a typical Rottweiler stance. You know, it's like join the army stance. Would you meet to have these two dogs meet now? No. He just came right at me. <laughs> the other thing that happens while well, wait until for a second. Belinda saying, you're not going to show my dog, right? <laughs> what? Yeah, he did. He went crashing right into me. This is a dog that would play with me and have no problem whatsoever, but as soon as he got into a state of arousal, he'd go crashing right into me. He also displaces like crazy. So he, that's why we didn't even bother to go in there to try to stop him. There's no way we're going to do that because he will displace. He displaced on one potential adopter two times. That, this was still the guy who took him home. Oh, jeez. Um, and he had, he's not broken skin, obviously, because that would be, you know, we wouldn't have left him up for adoption. And in fact, when the guy brought him back, we pulled him out. And now he's going to rescue, which is appropriate, because he's going to be able to cope and rescue, but he would not be able to cope here. So, but that dog, that, that, that's a terrible greeting for that dog. It's an absolutely terrible greeting. But last week, we had him playing with Strider and being very good with Strider. So it's not like he can't get along with other dogs. He can. He can get along fine, but not after, because he has leash aggression and because he's got fence frustration. Those two things preclude him meeting anywhere near a fence. You just can't do it. Now, if the dog didn't mind being behind a fence and so you could walk the dogs back up and down so they can get a good whiff of each other and all that kind of stuff, that eh, might be okay. You could do that then. But this way, no. Um, so he was... He was, yeah, that, that crashing right into me was just so much fun. Pardon? Does he have the same problem on leash? Pardon? Does he have the same problem on leash? Yes. Yes. I mean, you can go and take him out right now if you want to, and you'll find out. Okay, yeah. I take one out of Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, and, he, and he pulls like crazy on the leash. You know, leash frustration, the, the different things that go right along with it, pulls like crazy on the leash, lock and load on other dogs, um, and uh, the, the inability to hold back their own temper. You know, they, they don't have any kind of inhibition whatsoever. Yeah. He was a, a fascinating dog that he would, he would lock on another dog, but as soon as the dog and the person were around the corner... Go, look back at you. It was like instant. Yeah. You, you couldn't get him unfocused. Look right back at you then. He'd absolutely right back. So he would, yeah, I mean, and you could actually call him away, and he'd be okay. If you have treats on you, he'd go, oh yeah, I'm fine, that's always okay. So he's doing it as recreation right now, but two months down the road, if this ha continues to happen, it won't be recreation anymore. It'll be the way his body works. That's what he's going to be doing. He will have the neural pathway. Neural pathways are quite interesting because they are the re reason we have habits. <laughs> and if the dog gets in the habit of doing something every single time they see another dog, it's very hard to pull them out of that. The consult I was meant to be having this morning were the people who ended up at jury duty. The dog is... Um, has been getting worse and worse and worse with leash aggression, and it's because they have not, you know, they haven't worked a, a diff they haven't instituted a different behavior with the dog, and now he attacked a dog, and he bit it, and he sent it to the hospital. So it's like one on one on one on one. You know, you start smoking marijuana, you're gonna end up with crack. You know. <laughs> so. I have to put that in there somewhere. You know. Okay, and here's some fence greetings. This is actually stuff that, that Debbie took a long time ago, but it's always fun and it's pretty... Um, this, is, this, is, this is fence greetings gone bad. Leave it. Yes. Right, leave it, please. That will work. What'd she 
Huh? What'd she say? Greeting behavior. <laughs> you know? It's, uh, can you imagine a whole bunch of kindergartners all ready to go out to the, to the uh, playground and the teacher not making them line up? <laughs> they're all at the door, right? And they're going, and they're going through it. And that's what they would do. So that's precisely what dogs do when you don't allow them the, you know, you don't keep them in line about when, teach them what they're meant to be doing. And so if they do it properly, then they're okay. And I think that's it. So are any questions about this? Yes. What is the phenomenon? I mean, what is the whole barrier fence fighting thing? It's all frustration. Barrier aggression is, fr is frustration not being, well, it's a couple things. It's the not being able to get to the other dog when they really want to get to the other dog. It's also, I am behind my fence and I am safe. Therefore, I can act out. Um, John Fisher actually did a, an experiment where he had two dogs who fence fought their neighbors. And they had, um, they had fencing that they went back and forth and back and forth. And every day they did this. And so he and the owner took out the last part of the fence <laughs> over here. And the dogs go back and forth and back and forth and back. And then they stopped and they went, oh, ding. And they went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> they stopped going over here because they really wanted to do it here. You know, that arousal is its own reward. Arousal feels good. It's excitement. It's energy. It's the same thing that gets kids playing on the playground. And so if there's a safe way to, a, a, a really safe way to be, in a state of high arousal, they do it. And it's almost all dogs like it, especially if they're youngsters and they get to liking it. So one of the things that we tell our clients is do not let your dog do it, even though you think it might be giving them some exercise. It is not the kind of exercise you want to give them. Huh? It's, really it's very habit forming, yeah. Um, and it's interesting, Strider will do it at our house, but he won't do it here, thank goodness, because, you know, <laughs> because it would make it much more difficult to deal with him here. Yeah. Um, so your talk brought up a lot of memories of Pia Silvani's um, discussion a couple months ago. And so I have two questions for you. I just want you to comment on, on a couple of things she said. First thing, she, first thing that I remember is she, she discussed mounting, mounting as an agonistic behavior. Mm -hmm. and, and I wondered what you thought about that. And she, and she defined that as a conflicted behavior. What do you, what, what was your... Well, actually, I think, I think mounting in an adult dog can be a conflicted behavior, and it can be agonistic, of course. Agonistic meaning intention, uh, not nice intention. Um, like a snarl is an agonistic. But I don't know. I think it's very easy to oversimplify things. Okay. Um, one of the other things that she said was dogs who are playing do not make noise. Yeah, exactly. And in my, in my experience, dogs that are playing make noise all the time. Yeah. Some dogs don't make noise. Um, pit bulls, for instance, when they play, don't usually make noise. They make squeaky noises because they have balls, you know. But, but they, don't, they, they tend to not. Um, whereas German Shepherds tend to make a great deal of noise. Um, labs don't tend to make very much noise. So, you know, different breeds do what they do. Uh, so, mounting is oftentimes, well, you can actually see it. If you watch Strider when he meets an intact male dog, it's as though, have you ever seen a dog go to pee? You know, they get, kind of get into that strange part of their brain where they're like, <laughs> I have to pee now. You know, it's not like they're going, oh, I think I better pee. They're, 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 they go into a different part of their brain, and I think that happens with humping, too. They're kind of, they get this look in their face, their eyes dilate, and they're like, I have just gone into a very ancient part of the brain. It's probably deep down in the lizard brain. And it's going, okay, I have to hump now. It's an absolute necessity. And you can if you pull them off. Um, this is being videotaped, so this is going to be funny. You pull them off, they're still going... Right? They're still in that mode. It has nothing to do with, with, with the, a decision that they're making. Some dogs make a decision to do it, and it's definitely st status-oriented. Some dogs do it at, because they got in the habit of doing it, and some dogs do it because they go in this trance. I don't think you can say for sure one way or the other, unless you see the dog. <laughs>